Let's talk typewriter text. That's the visual novel dialogue type effect. I'm going to show you a very easy way to do it, and we are going to move pretty quick. You're going to need a widget. Here's my widget. If you don't know how to make a widget and add it to the screen, that is a different tutorial. Go look that up separately. Here's me adding it to the screen. A lot of tutorials will tell you to add it to the screen by using something on the character blueprint. That makes no sense. Just put it on the level blueprint since we're doing this just for debugging purposes. Here's the level blueprint if you've never used it before. And there's the widget. Now our first step is making sure that it shows what we want it to show rather than whatever we wrote in as default. So for that, we're going to go over to the graph on the typewriter widget, and we're going to add some new variables. We're going to have one called name. It's a string, full text, also a string, and display text, also a string. We're going to want to make those public. If you've never done this before, that's this here. It's the same thing. And for the first two, those are going to be exposed on spawn. We compile that, save that, go back over. If we refresh this node, there they are. There we are. Now text will, uh, will be passed to the widget properly, but it won't be displayed. In order to do that, we go back over to the designer side. We select the name text box and we bind it to the name variable. We select the dialog block and we bind that to the display text. Now we're passing it full text and we're showing display text. Those are different variables. So currently we show no text at all. Our job is to add characters to that display text. Seems easy enough. We'll go back over into the graph. Here we are, event construct. This is where we're going to be doing all of our dirty work. Now a for each loop or a for loop would do great, except that those ignore delay nodes. I don't really like that, but that's the way it is. So we're going to put in a, a delay node here, and we are going to build our own loop, right? No big deal. This is our duration. You can make that into a variable if you want and change your characters per second on the fly, however you'd like. After the delay, we are going to just put in a sequence block. Sequence blocks just keep things tidy. The first thing we're going to need to do is make that display text one character longer. So get the display text, get the length of the display text, add one to it, like so. Then we get the full text, and we get the substring of that. And of course, the length is one longer than whatever the current length is on the display text. That way, we just get the next character added to the list. There are other ways to do this. You could use a character counter, whatever you'd like. But this is a pretty easy way. And then we set that. So just create a little reroute node and then hook that to the sequence block. I recommend that you comment. Now down here, we have to loop. So we're going to check and see whether or not we need to loop. If we need to loop, we're going to go back over here to the delay node, and otherwise, we are not. So how do we check? We just check and see whether full text and display text are equal. Now that's SQL. That's not what I want. Equal. There it is. So if they aren't equal, we go back to the delay node. Make sure you go back to the delay node and not to the sequence node. We need to wait. That's the whole point. We're waiting a small amount of time between each character. So just make it a little prettier. Now, if they are equal, well, we're done. So we can do whatever we want. I would recommend something along the lines of delay for three seconds, four seconds, whatever, and then uh, destroy yourself. Easy enough, right? So we'll just label some of this stuff too. There we are. Is that enough to make it work? Let's find out. No problem. It's that easy. So this is a very fast and easy way to do this sort of thing. Now the issue with this, there are two issues with this for those of you who are planning on using something like this yourself. One issue is that delay nodes like this do not work inside of functions. So if you plan to make a function rather than putting this on a graph, you're going to have to do some, some kind of 
other method of, of calculating the delay. And a lot of other people will tell you to use like the event tick and keep track by using a calculation variable or something. This is much easier. Another thing that is a little bit wrong about this is it doesn't do proper word wrapping. As far as I know, there is no way to do proper word wrapping in just basic text blocks because there's no way to hide characters. And what that means is as you get towards the end of a sequence, here, I'll change this so that it has some, some word wrap. I just happened to accidentally type gibberish that didn't have any word wrap problems. This should, though. See how? There, see that? How it popped? Uh, whenever, whenever it reaches the end of a line, if you're doing it character by character, it'll drop to the next line suddenly. You don't want that. You would like it to start on the next line and stay there. And you can do that really easily with rich text by simply making half of the word invisible, but still there. I don't think there's any way to do that with just normal text blocks, uh, but that's a relatively small flaw for something that is so easy. We're just going to reiterate what we did. We're done, we're done with the uh, tutorial section. I'm just going to go through it one more time so you feel very comfortable. On event construct, we delay. Then we do one more character by simply getting the length and adding one and then getting that chunk of the full text. Then we check and see whether the full text and the display text are the same. If they aren't, we keep going around. If they are, we wait a while and then destroy ourselves. Now the whole point of this is you don't need for me to send you this blueprint. This is a very simple blueprint that you'll be able to customize and create yourself. So if you needed to do something besides self-destructing, if you need to add an event dispatcher, you should be able to figure out very, very easily how all of that fits in. Let me know if you didn't understand it and I'll try and be clearer in the comments. See you around.